Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. While we were making the thousand subscriber play button, we caught some people's attention when I showed this clip here. So there we were machining a PCB or printed circuit board. And a lot of people asked, hmm, how'd you do that? And the main reason why they were asking is because machining a circuit board like this doesn't really involve any cutting forces. You're using very tiny drills and very tiny end mills. So conceivably, you could perform this action with almost any one of the 3D printer assembly kits and then just attach a small Dremel tool instead of the printhead. And then you can, you know, machine a PC board. So that's why a lot of people are asking about this. Now, in reality, getting circuit boards made by a professional board house is dirt cheap and you get good quality boards like to the order of like 45 bucks for some small prototype boards you get three boards so it's it's relatively inexpensive uh, there's one board house that will do prototype size boards and a four layer board for like a hundred or 150 bucks I mean really cheap now the benefits of getting commercial boards made versus this method is you can have easily you can have two layer boards or four layer boards they're going to be consistent and you're going to have plated through holes now having plated through holes is a big advantage um, soldering these type of circuit boards that are made by this milling process or even home etching that don't have plated through holes are more difficult to solder and they don't hold the components as well so there are some drawbacks I did this mainly to, you know, wow factor, and it worked. A couple of people liked it. So I'll show you how I did it and set it up. Now, before we start, it is no simpler than just modeling your board in Fusion 360 and then camming it. It is literally that simple. But there's a caveat to that. How do you model a printed circuit board in a timely fashion and easily? So that's the rub. So I'm going to show you how I somewhat easily did this in Fusion 360. Now I'm not going to show you the circuit board laying out and the schematic and all that stuff. Um, I might do another video if people want to see the schematic for it. It's a really simple circuit. Um, you can use any of the circuit board layout softwares that are free. Uh, I heard rumors that some of these softwares will generate a DXF format of the entire board, including the drill holes and the traces. And if you can get that to work, that is the simplest method and, and you're home free. I could not get that to work, and I'll show you in a minute what I was able to get, but it wasn't very good. So I'll run through the different options that you have. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and we'll take a look at how we do this. <clears throat> so here's uh, Fusion 360 and what I'm gonna do is first I'll show you what I got from one of the DXF converters per se. I tried one of the free Gerber file to DXF converters and it did not go good. So we'll insert a DXF, we'll select a uh, sketch plane and we'll select our DXF file and that's what we got. It's, uh, whoa, we're all over the place. It's not to scale. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that did not work at all. And I stopped there because I was trying to get this done. I didn't have a lot of time to mess around with trying to get a DXF exporter to work. Now, every single um, circuit board software out there will export a DXF with the drill hole patterns and the pad uh, outlines. So let's do that. Let's insert a DXF. We'll select our sketch plane again. Okay. Now this DXF file imports correctly. It's the correct size of the board. All the holes are positioned where they're supposed to be and all the pad sizes for the components are where they're supposed to be. Now the reason why the softwares allow you to export a DXF uh, like this is because if you're doing surface mount you need to generate a stencil. 
And in order to generate a stencil, you need this information of where the holes are and where the pads are so that you can you know, laser cut your stencil. So we can use that as the base. Now, once that's in, now we kind of have an idea of where stuff has to be. We can use the center of these holes for our drill bits, so when we cam this, we can just drill out all these holes. But now we have the problem of getting the traces in still. So what I ended up doing, and I found this to be the easiest, most reliable method, is I literally took a screenshot of the, of the finished routed board in my layout software, and then I imported it into Paintbrush, and I just used the fill tool to make the background uh, bleach white, so it's you know 255 on the color map, and the trace is black, 000 on the color map. Okay? Now once I've got this, now I have a bitmap of the traces, and I have a very high contrast uh, image file here. I can then use one of the free online converters to generate an SVG file. And then I can import that into Fusion. Now before I import this, what I actually ended up doing is deleting all of the main pads off of the DXF first. And I'll show you why I did that in a minute. So I just deleted all of this. And all I left is two references in opposite corners. Now these are actually my mounting holes, but anything will work as long as you leave one object in each corner. So now we'll insert our SVG file. So we'll insert SVG file, select our file. Okay, so there's our SVG file that we generated from the screenshot. Now all we have to do is move it and scale it. And here's the trick. You, you might have to mess around with this for a little bit. The trick is, is to scale it. Oh, look at that. There we go. Is to scale the SVG file as close as you can to your two reference points. Okay, so that's pretty darn good. I'm going to call that good. So we'll hit OK. So now we have our two references and then the SVG file. Now the reason why I deleted the everything out is if you look at these circles the the pads are not round and the holes are not round now if you're okay with that go with it um, I'm a little bit of a stickler so what I ended up doing is I just went through the model and I deleted all of the holes and pads um, from the SVG file it took me a couple of minutes to go through and and delete everything I'll just do a couple just to show you what I did And then I, uh, I deleted the references too. Basically, I deleted the entire original DXF file. And we'll delete this stuff over here. Okay, and when you're all done deleting, all you should have left are all your traces. And then I reinserted the, D the original DXF file again. Okay, now the reason why I did that was because now I get nice round pads and holes and then all I have to do is just quickly run around with the extend tool and just extend the traces a little tiny bit in some places so that they will meet. That one meets. It doesn't matter if they overhang a little bit. Um, that one will meet. That one meets. Let's do this one. Okay, and you'll go around and, and do that to all of them. And then when you're all done, you should get nice paths. Now you can see this, this path is broken. So, you know, it's not highlighting. Now that's why I had to go back and fix it, because there were some breaks in the paths, and I just found that that cleaned it up. The, that was the easiest way to clean it up. Okay, so then you've got accurate holes. You have accurate hole locations. You've got accurate traces uh, in the board and you're all set. So now it's just a matter of creating an uh, extrude and you can extrude your traces and then cam them. So let's do that. So we'll, we made our, our sketch. Uh, first I made a 
box on this plane starting here and ending here and then I made it uh, 60 thou okay so then there's the thickness of the board right now keep in mind when you lay out a circuit board in the layout software it is a top-down view so now I have all my traces on the bottom layer of the board so it needs to be a mirror image to be correctly orientated okay so I will do another extrude but this time we're gonna do the traces so you can select all the traces and then what you want to do is minus and then go a little bit farther than the rectangle extrude and then do a join instead of a cut and then click OK and then you will get all your traces I didn't I didn't select them all so it didn't extrude them all turn the sketch back on okay so that's how I you know very easily and quickly uh, generated the model uh, and then uh, you can you know do another extrude for all your holes and just extrude your holes out okay so that is how I fairly quickly and efficiently was able to model the circuit board uh, in Fusion 360 now once you have it um, the rest is cake we basically switch over to the cam environment and then uh, use do a setup and then use a drill and drill all our holes and then uh, I just used the 2D contour and what I did is I just selected all of the traces and did a 2D contour around them and, and let it carve around the traces now in the video the tool I used wasn't actually an end mill it was a chamfer mill it's a it was an eighth inch chamfer mill that was ground to a sharp point and I told it to only machine into the surface uh, I think like four or five thou not even and what it did was is it just machined through the copper clad layer and it machined into the adhesive that it glues the copper down to the um, FR4 but it didn't actually machine into the FR4 at all and when I first started machining it, it it was raising this huge burr and it looked horrible and I didn't think it was gonna work so I stopped the machine and I cleaned it real good and lo and behold all it was burring up was the adhesive underneath it wasn't actually it was leaving a really clean copper trace um, so I let it run the rest of the program and drill it out and it worked great now one thing to mention on the drills I didn't have a collet to properly hold I think the smallest drill I wanted to use was a 23 thou drill or 25 thou drill I didn't have a collet to hold a drill that small so I ended up over drilling the holes by quite a bit so I drilled the holes 43 thou that was the smallest collet I could go um, and that was way too big for the integrated circuit dip package pins I had a hard time soldering them because the holes were so oversized the the solder didn't want to wick up on the pin so having the right drill bits and drilling the holes correctly is critical so in closing you can see how using this method can very easily get you cam code to then run on a you know machine or 3d printer or whatever you have you know to, to run your program and you can pretty easily make some simple circuit boards I would not advocate this for complex circuit boards you know like I said in the beginning 45 bucks gets you a really nice circuit board I think 60 bucks gets you a circuit board with silk screen and solder mask and like 100 or 150 bucks gets you a four layer board with power and ground planes and the whole nine yards so you know I I don't know how often I would do this I kinda did it just because it was it was a cool idea um, maybe if you're thinking about you know doing a brass board of something and not having a circuit board made um, maybe do this so the time the amount of time it took me to do this versus sitting down and you know hand soldering and hand wiring a brass board is probably equivalent but you get a much nicer product in the end so maybe that's a, a good use for this so um, so there you go uh, 
as always, if you have any questions or if there's something I missed, feel free to comment below or send me an email. I'm always willing to help, uh, help somebody out real quick. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.